Daniel chapter 11 actually give us a glimpse into this period that we have to talk about. So today we want to go into what God gave Daniel that he prophetically proclaimed about the intertestamental period. That's the 400 years. Remember the reason why we are doing this is because the prophetic is important in the life of the church, in the life of the people of God, okay? Christianity is prophetic. Christianity is apostolic. Yes, we have to be careful about the false prophetic and the false apostolic, but we must not throw the baby out with the bathwater. And we saw in our previous study that the, the Jews, they came into a destructive end because they refused to listen to God's prophet. Yes, they were listening to some prophets, but they were listening to the false prophets. They were not listening to righteous, godly, God sent prophet, and that was how they came to a sudden destruction, dispersed among nations, and suffered a lot. But thank God, because when they do listen to the prophet, they do see the restoration and the blessing of God. And we are saying that there is an end that is coming upon our generation. The end is sure, it will happen. But we need the prophetic for us to be prepared for that end. We need the prophetic for us to be able to live right during this period leading to the end. Because listen to me, the period leading to the end of an era or the end of a dispensation is always a very difficult period. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. Difficult times will come. So the period leading to the end of a dispensation, the period leading to the end of an era is always a difficult time. Okay. Unfortunately, this period is also a period when there are proliferation of false prophets. Okay. Because the devil will want to model the water because he understands that we need the prophetic. And again, I've mentioned this in previous teaching. The prophetic is not a, a hocus pocus. Prophecy talks about bringing the mind of God to bear upon the situation and the circumstances. It's not, it's not something that is hocus pocus. It's not something that is reserved for special, specific, you know, few. No. The church is prophetic. The Christian are prophetic. We can all prophesy. Now, we don't all stand in the office of the prophet, but that Bible in your hand is a prophetic book. And you can prophesy, you can know, and you can bring the mind of God to bear upon situation. The prophetic doesn't always talk about seeing into the future, even though that is important, even though that is what we are dealing with, even though that is very key. But to be prophetic simply means to bring the mind of God into situation, whether that simply means speaking forth or speaking, bring the mind of God into the situation now, or speaking for. Or speaking ahead, we need both. Amen. And what we are dealing with here was the prophecy that God gave to Daniel in a vision. And also the dream that God gave to Nebuchadnezzar. And this is helping us to understand those 400 years and also to understand our own time. Remember, we are not trying to do an exhaustive study of Daniel chapter 11. It is beyond the scope of what I'm dealing with at the moment okay but we want you to see i want you to see that your bible is prophetic number one and the prophetic actually is one of the uniqueness of the bible number two and the prophetic actually help us to understand the authority of the scripture that this bible is is a is god-given word and the prophetic actually help us to understand where we are in the agenda of god help us to be prepared help us to it's a tool that help us to live a holy and a godly life it's a tool for evangelism and this is very very important and these are some of the reasons why we talk about some of these things so in daniel chapter 11 god revealed to daniel some amazing details of what was going to happen in the future it talks about the great empire that was going to happen that was going to arise it talks about political development and it talks about end time powers so when you read the book of daniel chapter 11 that is what you will see so what i want to do is to just give you a quick review of the book and then we take some bit of it and again we are not doing an exhaustive study so that was what god was telling daniel and this is important because this is going to affect the jews but not just the jews is going to affect every people including ourselves so god revealed to daniel that look there is going to arise this great empire 
Obviously, this was during the medial Persia, but, but God was telling Daniel that empires will arise leading to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the things you need to understand is that the initial prophecy of Daniel chapter 11 has already taken place precisely as God predicted it. And this is one of the reasons why we are studying this, so that you will know that prophecy is prophetic. Okay, that prophecy happened. Okay, and that every prophecy that needed to be fulfilled has been fulfilled. The prophetic prophecy concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, prophecy concerning the, the, the period, the last days, or those prophecies that needed to have been fulfilled has been fulfilled. And that should give us a great reassurance to all that has run on to God for refuge. So the initial aspect of those prophecy has been fulfilled and we are going to see one or two ways in which they have been fulfilled. So when we look at secular history, and which is what we are going to be doing, when you look through the secular history and put it in parallel with the prophecy that we see in this Daniel chapter 11, you will be amazed at how accurate this prophecy has been fulfilled to fascinating details. Okay, now there are, there are still other part of this prophecy that has not been fulfilled. It talks about the, the king of the north and the king of the south. We know the identity of the early kings, but we don't know the identity of the end time king of the north and the end time king of the south because that is yet to be fulfilled. Okay, right. And when you read Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, it tells us something that we need to bear in mind. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, it said, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. What he told Daniel, he said, seal the book until the time of the end. In other words, there are some portion of what God gave to Daniel that are not uh, that are going to be sealed that are not going to be revealed until the time of the end let's now go into Daniel chapter 11 remember my point here is really not to do an exhaustive study is to point into what happened in the 400 years and so that we can take instructions so that that will help us to understand the New Testament also so that we can take instruction with respect to the prophetic and with respect to how we need to relate to the prophetic and how we need to live in the days in which we live. Daniel chapter 11 verses 1 and 2, Daniel said, Also I, in the first year of Dairos the Medes, even I stood to, to confirm and to strengthen him. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. This was the angel that God sent to Daniel. And this was during the first year of Darius the Medes, a king. And he was telling Daniel, he said, I show you the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. Remember what we said during this period in Daniel's life. This was during the period of the Persian, and this was during the reign of Darius, the Medes, Medio Persian. Okay, and he said there is going to be three more kings in Persia. Obviously, what tends to happen when this empire comes in is that one king will arise after another king in that empire. Okay, during the time of Babylon, it was the same thing. During the time of Persia, it was the same thing. One king, maybe the king died or there was a coup or another king takes over. All that is happening in those days. Still happens in our days, by the way. And the angels told Daniel that from Darius, there are going to be three more Persian kings. And then he talks about the fourth one. And he said this fourth one will stir up all against the realm of the Greeks. That's what we read in verse 2. Okay. And history tells, tells us, and remember what I'm doing here is to actually put secular history against the background of this. History, history actually tells us the Persian king who invaded Greek was Xerxes, who reigned from 485 to 464. Look, you don't have to know that name. The essential thing is that that prophecy was fulfilled in secular history. There was a king of the Medes that actually invaded Greece between that time period, 485 to 464 BC, and invaded Greece. And the Bible says that it will stir up all against the realm of Greece. So that 
happen. That gives us an introduction to this book. Verses 3 and 4 then speak of a mighty king whose kingdom will be broken up and divided toward the four heavens. And this is the key to the 400 years. So Daniel chapter 11 verses 3 to 4. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. That in a nutshell tells you the history of Alexander the Great, the Greek. God is saying that after the passion is going to come the Greek and then he spoke about this mighty king whose kingdom will be broken up or divided into four wings. Now in that verses that I read, those two verses, it actually tells you quite a number of history about Alexander the Great. Number one, we know he's going to come from Greek. He called him a mighty king. Alexander the Great was mighty. History tells us that within seven or eight years, he has conquered the then known world. His military conquest was not parallel in the history of the world, but he lived only four years more after that. Alexander the Great died very young. He said that he shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. He conquered the world. And then he said, when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken. He was cut short in his prime. But he said that what tend to happen in those days is that the kingdom just automatically goes onto their children. But the Bible says here in the vision given to Daniel that his kingdom will not be given to his family for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside. Verse 4 says that and when he shall stand up his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven and not to his posterity. So his kingdom did not actually go to his family and secular history actually told us that when Alexandra was going to die that he was asked who should take over from him and as Alexandra says something to the point like the greatest or the mightiest or something like that. What then happened is that when Alexander the Great died, his kingdom was divided among his four generals. And that is what the scripture says here, that his kingdom shall be divided towards the four wings. So the empire was actually broken into four <laughs> among his generals. And that was what was happening in the 400 years. And remember, all these things that were happening were having impact upon the Jews. Alexander the Great died. His kingdom was divided into four. Now, yeah, there are four of them, but we are going to focus ourselves only on two because these are the two that impacted history and these are the two that impacted the Jews. The remaining of Daniel chapter 11 from verse 5 to verse 39 then document the action of these last two kingdoms. Remember, even though there are four of them, we are really, really interested in two of the kingdom because these are really the luminous. They are the kingdom that we've come to call the Ptolemies and the Seleucid. So briefly, I want to talk about, very, very briefly, <laughs> I want to talk about the Jews under the rule of these two. And now we are looking at verses 5 to 39 that document the rule of these two bigger generals of Alexander the Great. And it is these two that this portion of the scripture in Daniel called their king, that they are called the king of the north and the king of the south. And there is always this conflict going on between these two kings. And the Jewish people during this time were often caught up in the rivalry and the fight between these two powers. Initially, the Jews were under the Ptolemies and the Jews prosper under the rule of the Ptolemies. It was during this time that the Hebrew Bible was translated into Greek that we come to call Septuagint. The Ptolemies allow the Jews to blossom in their religious worship and in their culture. But the problem is that the Ptolemies and the Seleucid, they were always fighting. Unfortunately, the Seleucid overcome the Ptolemies and the Jews come under the control of the Seleucid. So we have a situation where under the Ptolemies, the Jews prosper. But because of the conflict, their region came under the rule of the Seleucid. A lot was happening and a lot of film had been done, you know, Cleopatra and Mark Antony and all those things that you read about the, about, about the Greek during this time. And this was, this was the political development and political alignment and the political war and counter war that were going on during this period. But what I want you to see is how that impacted the children of Israel. 
Next time, we are going to focus on verses 21 to 34 because that key us into the New Testament. So all the shenanigans that was going on between the king of the north and the king of the south is what we read in Daniel chapter 11 from verse 5 to 39. And that was all that was happening during the 400 years. And that was impacting upon the children of Israel. During the rule under the Ptolemies, they were allowed to worship, they were allowed to enjoy their religion, their culture grew. But then the Seleucid took over. And verses 21 to 34 is going to be our focus next time by the grace of God. And the question is why? I will read this scripture for us before I conclude today and I will be taking it up next time by the grace of God. It is because of what the Lord Jesus said that makes this portion important for me to focus on and not skim over it like I did the other verses. Matthew chapter 24 was when the disciple came to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he's driven people out of the temple and had this conflict with the leaders inside the temple. He threw away the, the seat of the money changers. He said, my house shall be the house of prayer. He turned into a tent of thieves. Then he came out of the, and that was the last time he went to the temple until he was crucified. He came out of the temple and he was sitting on Mount Olive just directly opposite to the temple and the disciple came and asked him, tell us, when, that, when shall this then be? What shall be the sign of the end and the sign of your coming? And he took time to talk to them about this, extensive time to talk to them about the signs of the end time. It was in the process that he mentioned what I'm going to read to you now. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 24 verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. So the Lord Jesus mentioned this word, abomination that causes desolation. Abomination that causes desolation. And we are going to see how that happened, how that was prophesied in the book of Daniel, and how that was fulfilled in the intertestamental period and then key it into what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying here because there is a future fulfillment because that same phrase was used in Daniel chapter 12 verse 11 and from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up there shall be 1290 days now we are not going to get caught up in the in the days and the measurement, that's for another time. I mean, not even in this series. That is for when and if we want to talk about end time prophecy and look at the, uh, as it were, the chronology and the timeline. But what I want you to see there is this mentioning of the abomination of desolation. It was spoken of in the book of Daniel and it was actually fulfilled in the intertestamental period. But the Lord Jesus said it's going to be fulfilled in the future. So next time, by the grace of God, we are going to look into that and see how was it fulfilled during the intertestamental period? What impact does it have upon the children of Israel and how did they come out of that? Because that is going to be an instruction for us because this is going to happen again in the future, but we can take instruction, we can take comfort and direction from this prophetic utterance and the first fulfillment of that prophetic utterance and that can prepare us for the last fulfillment of that prophetic utterance. Now, before I conclude today, I just want to explain to you, read out to you what the abomination of desolation, what does it mean? Okay, when you look into that word, both in the Hebrew and in the Greek, this will be the definition. The abomination that causes desolation is a foul, abhorrent, detestable thing that will horribly desecrate, destroy, waste, and devastate an area to such an extent that it leaves the onlooker speechless. So that is what we are going to read in these verses 21 to 34, okay? How this happened to the Jews and how this is going to happen again in the future and once we wrap that up then we can then go into the new testament and look at new testament survey praise the lord i hope this has been helpful to you i know there's a lot of history and there's a lot of geography and you're wondering how what does this has to do with me i've already mentioned that this is very important for our bible knowledge 
This is very important for our faith in the Bible and our faith in God. This is very important for our Christian living because of our understanding of the uniqueness of the Bible, the uniqueness of our God. And this is very, very important for evangelism. And if you are listening to me today, let me tell you something. This Bible is the Word of God. It is true. Okay, and no word, no, no dot from the word of God will fall to the ground without fulfillment. And that word says that this word is going to come to an end. And that the only people that will be saved out of it are the people that have jumped into the rescue boat, which is the cross of Jesus. There's no other name given among men whereby we might be saved. So you can today if you want, and I'm praying that you will know down and understand that this world is going to destruction. You can jump out of that sinking ship today and ask God to be your captain. Ask him to be your Lord. Ask him to come into your life and save you. Confess your sin and rebellion. Release yourself to his lordship and he will come in. He will do a deep work in your heart. It will take the heart of stone, heart of the devil out. It will give you a new spirit, a new heart and it will be your God. It will be your guide. It will be your father from now to eternity. Hallelujah. Do it today in Jesus name. Father, we thank you.